Hey guys, Limo here, back with another classic wild guide. Today, we're going to be looking at how to solo Maradon in order to get some pre-raid bis items such as the Black Stun Ring and start working towards gold for your epic mount. This video is kind of a continuation from the very first upload on this channel back in January. Um, it's just to update people on the differences between private servers and classic wild. Because there have been some people who are struggling killing princess in classic compared to private servers. Okay, so let's take a look at each boss's abilities. Tinkerer Gizlock has four abilities. The first one is Bomb. He will occasionally stand still and throw a bomb onto the position where the player was standing when the cast begun. You really want to avoid getting hit by this. His second ability is Goblin Dragon Gun. He will stand still and cast a flamethrower type effect. You want to try and avoid this as much as possible and utilize the time that he is standing still to cast some spells onto him without risking taking too much damage. His third ability is the fact that he can shoot his gun. Um, you want to try and either outrange this or line of sight it as it does quite a bit of damage. His fourth and final ability is Flash Bomb, which is basically the scare beast ability for hunters. Um, this is only really applicable to druids and hunters as it only fears beasts. Um, as a druid, it would be very easy to solo him in bear form. However, if you try and do this, he will occasionally fear you with his flash bomb, which means you risk running into the various trash packs in his room, which is why we kill this guy in caster form. So now we are going to talk about Princess's abilities. Her first ability is Boulder. She will occasionally stand still and cast this ability. If the cast is successful, you will be stunned, which gives her some time to reach you. It is possible to outrange this and also line of sight this ability. Her second ability is Dust Field. She will occasionally, after reaching you, stand still and do an AoE type effect. You want to get out of this ASAP and use this time to create distance between yourself and the boss. This is different to private servers as she only casts this after reaching her target in Classic WoW. Her third ability is Repulsive Gaze. This is a fear ability which she sometimes uses when she has reached her target. It seems quite random when she casts it. Um, I believe she will only cast this if she has reached you whilst her dust field ability is on cooldown. Um, as a druid, you want to make sure that you are in bear form if she ever casts this, otherwise it's very likely you will die. Her fourth ability is Fresh. This ability, I believe, was not included on private servers. Um, basically, she has a chance to hit multiple times on her melee swing. Seemingly, whenever she reaches you in Classic, she will hit you five times. Um, this can be over 60% of your health if you are not in bear form, which is why it's super important to swap into bear form whenever Princess is going to reach you. You want to use your Scepter of Celebrast to get to this point in the instance. It requires doing some quests in Maradon. Um, I will leave a link to a guide in the description from another YouTuber on how to do this. So the first thing you want to do is make your way to Tinkerer. If you have Mining or Herbalism, there are various nodes in this instance which can be quite profitable, such as Blindweed, Ghost Mushroom and Mithril. The mobs in the corridor should not aggro onto you, even if you are not in stealth. So for Tinkerer, I open up in cat form, but in hindsight it's probably a lot safer to just open up at range. You want to get Moonfire and if you have it, Insect Swamp up on him at all times. You need to utilize the ramp in his room for line of sight to avoid getting shot. Remember his abilities. Move out of the bomb cast, line of sight his shots, do not stand in the flamethrower and utilize that time to nuke him down and do not go in bear or cat form. As with the princess fight, this is all about keeping an emergency mana pool in case you need to heal and slowly rotting the boss down. It's kind of important to use Innovate as soon as possible to bring it back up as fast as possible in case you need to use it two times. However, this fight is pretty quick, it takes about five minutes, four minutes, something like that. So you probably won't need to use Innovate twice.
Tinkerer drops items which are worth between 2 gold 26 silver and 3 gold 21 silver. He also seems to drop approximately 16 silver, as well as some other items such as solid blasting powders. So with Tinkerer taken care of, we can now start moving towards Princess. Remember to try and take advantage of the herbing and mining nodes whilst running to Princess. So for Princess, you want to keep at max range the whole time. Never stop running if it is possible. Keep Moonfire on her. She is, however, immune to insect swarm and other nature damage such as wrath and thorns. When she reaches you, make sure you are in bear form and always try to conserve mana. It is not a bad thing to stay in bear form for a little while whilst your mana regenerates. You will only die if you go out of mana. Remember, stay max range, Keep Moonfire up, be in bear form when she hits you, and move out of the AoE.
princess usually drops at least two items and one of those is always a blue item from her loot table. These items can range in value between 1 gold 2 silver and 4 gold 48 silver. She occasionally will drop a random green item instead of a second blue item from her loot table. So I would say on the low end of the amount of gold you can make per hour is approximately 25-30 gold per hour. But if you get kind of average luck getting some weapons which are worth like 4 gold each, um, you can probably bump that up to the 40 or 50 gold per hour, um, which is quite decent to be honest. Okay guys, just going to go through my gear and talents for those interested. So I have the Feathermoon Headdress, which is a BOE Blue. Um, getting from the auction house, not sure how much it costs. Uh, got me from my Guild Anixia run, um, it was an upgrade for me. Um, Arclight Talisman is from the quest in Eastern Plaguelands that starts with the uh, Defenders of Darashire questline. Um, the quest that gives this is called Hidden Treasures. It's the same one that gives the Ring of Protection. So for my shoulders, I have the Kentic Amiss. Um, this drops from Black Rock Depths from High Interrogator. Um, you will probably get this while leveling if you're doing a lot of BRD. Same with the Cloak. Drops from the same boss. So pretty easy to get those two in a few Black Rock Depths runs. For the chest, I have the Magister's Robes. Um, these drop from General Drakasaf in Above Black Rock Spire probably quite a low drop chance uh, fortunately not many people actually need them um, so it's pretty easy to pick up high amount of intellect which is really nice for this run for the wrists I just have some um, some green braces of the owl from the auction house and for the hands I have the bloodfire talons which are from sunken temple and um, the drop from all of the green dragons uh, so dream Sire, weaver as I said, Moth has. Um, they're really good for Molten Core as well. Um, really nice pickup if you can get them. And the belt is from Ungora Creator from a quest. It's just high amount of intellect. Um, you can pretty much use any high intellect belt. Or if you have the Banfox Sash from BRD, if there was no mages or anything that needed those, um, it'd be pretty cool as well. It'd help out a lot, this one. It's really nice as well. So for my legs, I have the Luminary Kilt, which is again from Blackrock Depths. Did a lot of Blackrock Depths while leveling. Uh, this one drops from Golem Lord in BRD. Drops very often a lot more than all the other items, seemingly. Uh, Omnicast Boots is from the same guy. A green of the Owl Ring from the Auction House. Um, so I'm using Ring of Protection, which is from the same quest as the Neck. Um, if you have a caster ring, I would recommend using that. I'm just using this because my other ring is just a plus healing ring, basically. And I like the armor for if Princess actually hits you. So I have the second wind, which again is from Golem Lord in BRD. Really nice. Uh, especially the use effect. Uh, smoking out on the mountain from enchanting. Again, if you have a better caster trinket, I would use that. Um, I just use this because I don't have better and the armor value is really nice against Princess when she melees you. Same with the Wand Staff. My items are just plus healing ones. Um, so I use Wand Staff for a bit more mitigation um, for when she hits me. One thing I would strongly recommend is to get run speed on boots. I don't have them uh, on this set of boots. Uh, which is good because it shows that you don't need it. It does help a lot though. Um, I would recommend it a lot. As for the talent spec, um, I am 0, 30, 21, so zero in balance. And then the tanking talents in Feral, so Ferocity five out of five, Feral Instinct for the threat. Thick Hide three out of five, Feral Charge, Sharpen Claws, Primal Fury, Predatory Strikes, Fairy Fire, Savage Fury, and Heart of the Wild 5 out of 5. Uh, like I said in my last video, you can choose to go 4 out of 5 Heart of the Wild and get 1 point in Nature's Grasp for PvP. Um, but I like having 5 out of 5 at the moment. And in Restoration, 5 out of 5 Furrow. Uh, I go 1 out of 2 in Improved Enrage. Um, I prefer it over the Threat Reduction or the Nature's Focus or the Improved Mark of the Wild just because it lets you 
when you swap into bear form, along with Fur, it lets you charge and um, get a bash, which is really nice. Improve healing touch so you can get up to nature swiftness. Uh, reflection is mandatory. Insect swarm for PvP situations. Um, Princess is immune to insect swarm, but Tinker is not, so it helps in Tinker, but it doesn't help with Princess. Uh, Tranquil spirit, mana cost reduction is nice for raiding and um, dungeons. And yeah, nature swiftness, probably one of the best talents in the game, really nice. If you guys stuck around till the end, thanks a lot. Hopefully you guys now have a better understanding of how to solo Mara and can hopefully get some gold on your Blackstone ring. I have a few more guides in the works, uh, they're quite big ones and it's taken quite a bit of time to capture all the footage for those, so stay tuned. Um, if you guys would like to support the channel, um, please just subscribe, it helps me out a lot with growing the channel. So guys, until next time, see you later.